Okay, today we're gonna have a little fun and talk about patina on carbon steel knives. <clears throat> so these are all ingredients from cutlery knives and um, when you get a knife, the blade looks like this. Sometimes it has a little bit of oil on it because that's what they put on it to keep it from oxidating, from um, corroding. So when you get it, it's nice and shiny. Um, this one seems to have like a satin finish on it. Some of them come with a more of a mirror finish. There's always those scratch marks when you get it, but um, they come without any patina on them, obviously. So there's different ways. I mean, the knife as you use it is going to get a patina because it's a carbon steel. So the carbon is going to corrode quicker than a stainless. Well, that's why they call it stainless. Um, so <clears throat> if you weren't, if you were just going to use the knife, um, you may end up with a patina like this. This is 01 tool steel. It's a little bit different than the 1095, but you can see if the light catches it right, you can see some blues in there. Um, my, uh, Japanese knife friend who runs Japanese knife imports says that cooked meats provide the most beautiful patina. Um, let's take a look at this one. So this one I haven't done anything with, but it's that dull blue steel. Um, well, it's Japanese blue steel, but it's, uh, there's like a dull gray finish to it now because it's carbon steel. As opposed to something like this, which is stainless, that stays nice and shiny. So anyway, so my buddy says that Cooked meats provide the best patina. Um, like onions will give you kind of a yellowy patina. Um, but sometimes you can see a little bit of blue in there. You can get a little bit of blue from uh, from cooked meats. Anyway, so that's the difference between carbon steel and stainless steel. <clears throat> and I uh, tried some knives I just used and they develop a patina like this one. I cut some, you know, I cut sausage with it and um, it just develops that dark corrosion there. Um, now, I guess it's not quite rust, but it's technically also corrosion. And people say that if you have a built up layer of patina on the blade, it sort of protects it from actually rusting. So here's another one that I started just using and then I did the technique that I'm about to demonstrate to give it sort of an even dull gray color to it. Um, so the difference is that this one is not, it's not very even, and this one is nice and even. So <clears throat> here's another one that I did it with. Same, same pattern. You can see the new blade on top, satin, shiny, and then the, the patinaed blade using the process that I'll show you right now on the bottom. Kind of gives it a already old type look. Um, some people consider it cheating and obviously the best, you know, the purest way to get a patina on your knife is just to use it. Cut a few apples with it and it'll go quick because it comes with um, acid does it to the blades. So um, I also did this, the pen blade. So you can see it's kind of just like a dull, a dull gray color. So I read about this technique on bladeforums.com, which is probably the number one resource for information about these knives. Um, the other thing about these knives is that some of them have nickel silver bolsters. So this bolster on the top is nickel silver. It's got a little bit of a yellow um, color to it compared to the one on the bottom, which is steel. So some knives are steel bolsters uh, and steel liners. This one is nickel bolsters and brass liners. You can see the brass there. So the brass will patina, but in a different way, and the nickel won't, but the, but the stainless steel will. So I kind of like knives that will patina all over. So this one is 100% stainless, well, 100%, sorry, 100% steel, not stainless. If it were stainless, it wouldn't patina very well at all. But, so the bolsters actually patina too. So you can do this process to the bolsters. Um, and so I'll show you what this process looks like. I have this guy with a little bit of use uh, stain on it. There you go. That's a great shot of it. The blue on the tip is again from cutting meats. Yeah, 
the side. Yeah, you can see that blue color again. But I'm gonna use it to demonstrate for you and we'll get an even sort of dull gray patina on this, on this blade. So, <clears throat> what do we need to do that? Here's what we need. Basically three things and some paper towels. First of all, we're gonna clean the knife with alcohol so that it's clean, because if you have spots where there's oil sitting on the knife, that part will not be affected by the vinegar. We're using the vinegar as the acid, which will patina the blade. And then this is a tip I found at Blade Forms. If you use a little bit of silver polish, you can sort of polish out the uh, any spots that are uneven in the patina. And that will allow you to get a sort of uniformly dull gray finish. You know, this one has uneven spots here, and this big dark, dark spot in the middle was because I had, uh, it already had a spot on it before I did this. But um, anyway, so what do you need to do? First, let's clean the blade. So we're going to take this one and just put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the paper towel. And then just wipe the blade with it. Sure there's no spots and maybe dry it over here make sure there's no oil in the blade so don't touch the blade after you've done this cool so now <clears throat> next thing you need some sort of cup or container that you can dip the blade of the knife into and I have this small ball jar but you can use a jar or whatever you will be microwaving this container so Make sure it's microwavable. Uh, now, what I did last time was I put about half of distilled white vinegar. Um, this again, vinegar is an acid, and so that's really what we're using. Uh, and then I also just filled it the rest of the way up with water. So now, to most chemical processes are sped up by heat. And so we are going to microwave this until it's very hot, about two minutes in the microwave, then we'll be back. Okay, we're back. This is very hot, I know, because it boiled and boiled over in my microwave. I had to clean it up. So, very hot. Also, while I was gone, I wanted to show you this kitchen knife as a good example of the, the blue patina I was talking about. If I can see it, can't, yeah, right in there. There you go. Kind of cool. Like a little bit of blues, a little bit of purples. Again, cooked meats. Um, that's one of my nicer kitchen knives. Anyway, okay, so we've got this, it's very hot. Now I'm hoping the camera will capture this. So you've got the clean blade. Now what you wanna do is dip the blade in the acid, the vinegar, and you'll see bubbles form on the blade itself as the reaction is taking place and the blade will actually go quite dark. Um, and what you then wanna do, if you, oxygen also speeds up the reaction. So if you take the blade out and there's drips of vinegar on the blade, it will continue reacting and it will react more around the edges of the drips and you'll have drip marks on the blade. So you wanna go right from the cup into running water to stop the reaction. So we'll see if we can see this. Let me see if I can reposition this camera a tiny bit so we can see the bubbles on the blade. The other thing to note is you can see the condensation right here at the rim. Because it's so hot, it's actually evaporating too. So with some knives, you can just hold them above the hot um, vinegar and it will actually start condensing on the knife, just like it's doing there, and start reacting. So, we're going to dip the blade. Squish it around a little bit. Now, can you see... I'm going to try to get a better camera angle here. Right down in it. Alright, so if we see if we can see... There, you can see the bubbles on the blade, right? Rising up. So the longer you hold this in there, the darker the blade will become. You can see it's already getting kind of dark. 
So we'll give it some more seconds. You can see the bubbles rising off the blade, and you can see it's getting dark quite quickly. Um, now again, this will cause your knife to rust if you leave it in too long, and if it gets into the hinge, it will also rust too. So I'm sort of just dipping the blade up to where I'm comfortable. Okay, so I'm going to take it out and run it right under water. Hold on. Just going to stop the reaction. Great. Now I will back the camera off a little bit and see how we did. Okay. So, let's dry this. Where's that paper towel? Dry this off. All right, so now we've got a much darker blade than we started with. Remember, the blade we started with looked a lot more like this color. See how much darker that is? And you can tell it didn't quite take evenly. Like I said, there was already some patina on the blade, but you can see the etching is almost unreadable now. And let's look at the reverse side. Yeah, so it's, it's, not, it's not a very even patina. Now, it's basically a thin layer of corrosion, right? So if we, even if we just take our thumb and just like wipe it, sometimes you can wipe some of it off or leave a fingerprint or whatever. So if we want to even this out, <clears throat> one of the best ways to do it is silver polish. So what I found works, what works well, is to just take a dab, just take a little bit of paper towel like this maybe get this wet so I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on it there we go and I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of this silver foam just like that and I'm just gonna rub the blade and you see it will it will basically take off most of the stuff you just put on but it will leave sort of a thin gray more uniform layer Here it is on this side. And what I read on Blade Forum said that if you do this two or three times, you can really get a nice even gray patina. So you can see I've sort of rubbed a bunch of it off. Now I'll rinse it. Get all that uh polish off. <clears throat> and I'll dry it here. And if you want, you can clean it again with um, rubbing alcohol. But um, yeah, you can see it's not it's not terribly uniform. That doesn't doesn't totally bother me. Um, again, now it's it's pretty much the same color as the new blade. Just got a sort of dull gray. So, put the silver silver polish aside for a sec. Bring this back into the picture. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna just wash it with alcohol one more time. Make sure I didn't get any fingerprints on it. So I've got a little bit of alcohol here. I'll just wipe it. Now, I've seen people that get way better results than I get, um, but this is the idea anyway, and you can tweak it to see how it, how you can make it better. But, okay, and that blade is clean. So I'm just gonna dip it again into vinegar. I'm gonna bring it over so you can see a bit of, ow, that's burning. Whoa, that's really hot. So like I said, the heat will make the reaction go much faster. But you can see the bubbles through the glass even. Now with my thumb in the way. But you can see them. Much darker, much darker gray. So I'll switch that back and forth a little more. You can see the bubbles rising. So it goes pretty quickly. I tried this with cider vinegar and it didn't work at all. A lot of people say to use cider vinegar. Um, whatever my brand of cider vinegar, didn't work. 
at all. This did not happen at all. <laughs> so I guess it might also depend on the brand or the age or whatever, but I just used distilled white vinegar. Okay, so that's probably good. So I'm gonna go right into the running water again. Just to stop the reaction. And now, this is the second, second run, you'll see a big difference. So that's quite a dark, quite a dark gray. Remember, we started with this. And I'll dry it off. So this might be a little thicker coat, so you may be able to tell what I was saying before. If you leave it in there, it's almost, it's almost like, a, like a powder coat. So let's see if I can just rub some of it with my thumb. Sometimes you can, you can just rub some of it off. Um, but that's a pretty, it's a pretty uniform uh, dark gray there. And you can see the etches just about gone. Still sort of read it. Um, anyway, so that's a dark gray. If I wanted to, I could um, polish it with the silver polish again, which would turn it a little bit lighter, rub some of it off. I mean, you can see right there the transition. You can even see a little bit of orange in here. That's probably rust. You can see the transition from where it was in the vinegar and where it wasn't. Now, the other thing to be careful of is if you if you really dip it in here, and if you have on this knife, I dipped it pretty deep because I wanted to also try to affect the bolsters. And you can see you can see a tiny bit of rust right here, um, and in the joint there. So it actually corroded pretty well in the joint. And so when you're done. You want to rinse the knife pretty well, and I used a hair dryer on this one to really dry it well. And then I oiled the joint. I put some WD-40 in here just to stop all that corrosion, any of the corrosion that was happening from vinegar in there. And remember, the vinegar also, the way I did that, you can see the back springs on this knife are darker, because I think the back springs are uh, higher carbon steel than the liners. Um, so the way I did the back springs on this knife, and, and I'll do it again for you just to show you, is I just laid the knife across the cup. Because like I said, if the vinegar is hot, it's also evaporating and it'll be hit, it'll hit the back of the knife just as it, as it comes up from the surface. And so that's another way you can do it. And you can just suspend the knife uh, above the hot vinegar. So like right here, you should be able to see a little bit of it condensing. Yeah. And so that's actually sort of vinegary um, evaporation. And that will corrode as well if you leave the knife sitting there, um, it, will, it will corrode as well. So now a couple things to be careful of. One, um, some people recommended cotton swabs or Q-tips to do the back springs and the bolsters. You have to be very, very careful depending on what kind of handle covering you have on your knife. Um, I used the cotton swab on the back of this knife right here and it just sucked the dye right out of the bone. So see that light spot? That was because I hit that with the cotton swab just coming down with the hot vinegar and it just sucked the dye right out. I don't know, that was dark red like the rest of it. Um, so you have to be really careful if you've got dyed bone scales on your knife because that, um, that can happen. But it's a pretty cool way to get a uniform dark patina on your knife. You can see again, uh, the one I did previously in the bottom and then this one that we just did just now, it's quite dark. Um, and if you want to lighten up, you can just polish it with some silver polish or some flitz polish or whatever, but uh, that's how you do it. Vinegar, silver polish to even it out, um, and rubbing alcohol to clean it. And it should work for just about any carbon steel. Um, so I, I had tried this and thought it was pretty cool, so I wanted to show it. Um, so other people might be able to try it. So there you go.